guys. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to Vanessa's Van Life Journey. Uh, I am just now getting up. And the first thing I'm going to do is fix the bed. So you guys it's saying that my battery is low on the phone so today what i'm gonna do today today is wednesday or thursday i'm not sure i got the yeah i'm getting a little cold sore right here i don't know why i've been picking at my nose i'm gonna have to put some uh peroxide or something on it today is thursday oh my goodness so anyway you guys i was gonna get ready to go out of town to uh I was gonna get ready to go out of town to go check my mail in Nevada, but I, at the last minute, got an email from my mail service in Texas, and it was like, my mailbox is full. So I had them ship my mail to Nevada because I thought I was leaving here. I could have had it shipped here, but I thought I was leaving here, so I had it shipped there. So, I have to wait for my mail to get there. They say it'll be there by Monday. So, uh, what I decided to do, instead of going to Nevada and staying in a hotel and spending about $1,000 or more, I just decided to stay here in Quartzsite and go ahead and do some DIY projects this weekend. And so next week, Monday or Tuesday, I can leave out Go pick up all the packages in Nevada. She said, I got so many packages, y'all. She said, I'm going to need a U-Haul truck. But we going to fit as many as those packages, hopefully all of them, in our van when we get there. I don't know what y'all done sent me that I need a U-Haul truck, but it sounds like, girl, housewarming party number three going to be bigger than housewarming party number one and number two. That's what it seemed like to me. So anyway, y'all. I am about to do some DIY projects today. I'm gonna go take me a bath first, brush my teeth, wash my face, 
and then I'm gonna go live on the other channel, Vanessa VIPD. If you're not subscribed to that channel, make sure you subscribe and make sure you subscribe to this channel too, girl, if you're not subscribed. Look underneath the video for the subscribe button. If that subscribe button is black or red, you are not subscribed to the channel, girl. I don't know what you're waiting on, but please subscribe to the channel. It would help me out a lot. Hit the button once, it should turn white or light gray, and then it's gonna say subscribed. And then you're gonna be a part of the Nutty Buddy family. Thank you. So yeah, y'all subscribe to this channel, Vanessa's Van Life Journey and Vanessa VIPB. I go live on the other channel and you see the behind the scenes in real time. But then I do other filming over here of different angles and that way when that video come out you will see it from a different perspective so anyway uh yeah i'm gonna go and get myself together and take me a bath and you guys the water is so hot in arizona it comes out the pipes hot so i do not have to warm up water anymore when I take a bath. So I'm gonna actually clean out this bathtub. And then we are going to draw up some bath water. My little thing right here, this little thing doesn't work right. I seen some more stoppers on uh, Timu that I ordered that I hope work better because I got to play with this thing sometimes for about five minutes to get it to where it is not draining water out from the bathtub. bubble bath. So I'm going to put you guys on the charger. But let's talk about for a minute what it is like to have a vehicle that you can stand up in, a home that you can stand up in, which is my tiny home that you can stand up in, that you can move around in, that you just the luxuries of the tiny home have a refrigerator which I can have a, a larger refrigerator than I do in the van uh, I, I can stand up at my stove and cook instead of sitting down like I was getting so many aches and pains in the van from always having to sit in awkward positions just to be able to achieve cooking and all of this different stuff and uh, now I can stand up and do everything I need to do I'm getting my you know stretching in and uh, I have a toilet now I don't have to use it inside of a bucket even though I still have to go outside and empty the black tank but I have a toilet now and just the standing up just the moving around just the even though this tiny home is just one little room it still makes such a big difference to just have one room that's compartmentalized, but you still have enough room for everything. I still have enough room for a bed. I still have enough room for a stove, a sink, a toilet, a bathtub, and I still have enough room of uh, storage for everything that I need. Now, if I was building this trailer from scratch, I would definitely redesign it a little differently, but you know, I am still enjoying all the room, all the, uh, the standing room, and just the living space that you have. So it does make a big difference in your life as a nomad or as somebody that is just, you know, living out of or, or just living and trying to survive if i was living here uh all the time it would still be doable with this amount of space just living out of a tiny home 
it would definitely be doable. It's even better when you can build it from scratch and cater to your own, own needs though. So y'all, I'm about to go brush my teeth, wash my face, and uh, take me a bath because I'm hungry. My stomach is scratching my back. And yeah, so I need to figure out what I'm gonna wear today. Okay, you guys, not that all of our 2,000 parts are washed. No more uh, of the lotion will come out the pump. So I had to open it up. And use it to the last drop. We ain't wasting nothing over here. So because I got a little cold sore coming on, I think I'm gonna put a little vinegar on a cotton ball and see if that will help dry it up. Sometimes in this heat, you, uh, when I be sweating and stuff, cause it's so hot, I start sniffling at the nose and stuff. I don't know if that's why it is, but I'm gonna get some, um, I'm gonna get a cotton ball and put some vinegar on it and put it on my nose. Got my cotton balls in my mason jar. Got some apple cider vinegar right here. Let's see if it burn. Burn, baby, burn. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, it burn. It definitely burns, but uh, let's see if that dries that up fast, quick. And in a hurry, out of here. Let's see if I'm gonna like it. Oh yeah. That way, I ain't got to worry about wasting any. And that container that it came in was suspect. So yeah, I like it in there. I got this from the Dollar Tree for one twenty-five. Dollar Tree, yeah, from the Dollar Tree for one twenty-five. And I love the gold, you know, that matches my decor. So I love that. Hey Siri, <laughs> what's the temperature? It's about 108 degrees outside. It's 108 degrees and it say it's 50% chance of rain. Girl, we got a chance of rain? <laughs> Girl, we don't be having no chance of rain. So that must mean months will seem monsoon season is coming because we got a 50% chance of rain so I eventually need to take all of my uh, tarp things down because Miss uh, Donna say in the monsoon season that'll make my canopy thing airborne because uh, apparently the monsoon season gets things get very windy and hectic out here so I need to take that stuff down eventually. 50% chance of rain, really? So anyway, y'all, I'm warming up my food. I'm warming up some chicken and I'm getting ready to eat. So I just took some chicken out the refrigerator and we got a chicken breast in here. So I've been letting that warm up. I'm not really that fond of the chicken. I really don't have an appetite for the chicken, but I need to eat what I food prepped.
Okay, you guys, my first DIY project is going to be to uh, paint the stove. And so I actually am going to clean it first and I'm going to touch these areas up. I'm going to sand it again lightly. Touch these areas up with spray paint that some of the paint have came off of. Or maybe not. But I am going to sand it. I'm going to clean it, wash it, and sand it. And then we're going to take this outside and paint this. So you guys, I have to wash this again. I have a lot of grease stains on here. And before I paint this, I need to get the grease stains off. And I forgot to buy some more Drello pads the other day when I went to the, store, the dollar store. So this is the last one. paint that I used on here the grill paint as you can see that wasn't the correct paint to use on this stove because when I got ready to just do a general washing of getting the uh, caked on cooking oil off as you can see it is coming off so we're gonna see if the epoxy paint does better on this but as you can see that was not the correct paint for this type of project anyway. Okay, you guys, just a word of advice. I painted the stove first with the type of paint that you use for the high heat barbecue pits. I didn't know anything about the appliance epoxy paint. I found out about it after the fact. So I'm gonna suggest to you to use the uh, epoxy appliance paint first before using 
uh, don't use any other paint. Use this paint first because this is going to be made for the appliances. And I think it's going to allow you to be able to wipe it down. And because uh, one thing I am noticing with the other paint is that the oil and the food is just being caked on and it stains it. So I think this is going to give you more of an enamel and let you be able to wipe it down and clean it better without the paint coming off. Because when I try to clean the other stove, the paint comes off. So I'm going to put a link to this in the description box below so you can make sure you get the correct one. It is going to be an affiliate link. So you can order it on Amazon and have it sent directly to your house. I think they come in uh, black and white. So I'll link this in the description box below. So anyway, let me clean this top and let's see if some paint come off just by me cleaning it with the Brillo pad, which that's, you don't want that. So that's why I don't use the other paint and we'll do a wear test on this as well in the future and see how I'm able to clean my appliances uh, with this type of paint. Okay, you guys this is how the first coat is looking and I am gonna dry let it dry a little longer but as you can see it's a little shiny and it has an enamel like a regular stove appliance which uh, should make it easier to clean uh, I don't know if it's gonna be Brillo pad friendly clean but we're definitely gonna test this out in the future and see what the wear on the epoxy uh, appliance paint would be for a stove top but i am liking the way that uh it has a shine and a sheen and like i say we're gonna let this continue to dry it's 108 degrees here in arizona but i am under some shade so i don't know if i should take it and like put it over there and let it dry over there but i might put it over there because baby that'll cook it on like really 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 good it'll cook it on so i think i'm gonna do that put it over there in that sun and yeah that'll be like putting it in the oven and letting it bake on <laughs> so that's what i'm gonna do y'all water hose that I just bought from Walmart burst from the heat. I came out here and the water just everywhere. Just everywhere. Let's check out this piece. See how that's looking. I don't know if it's dry. If I could touch it, it is in the heat though. So I don't know if that's how shiny it's going to be or I'm scared to touch it because I don't want to put no fingerprints on it. And, oh my goodness, this one got water on it from the water hose, must be. When that water hose bust, burst, it must have got water on it. So I need to get that, I need to get that off of there. 
to get that off. Okay, but I sanded these. These are my stove things. So we're going to paint those. I'm going to shake that can up real well. And we're going to paint those. Let me get something to wipe that thing off. I need to bring some water in the tiny home. Do I have anything? just dab it a little that water hose just burst and that's a new water hose so we're gonna have a little water splatter there okay let's get back to work I have the uh, stove outside being painted. The front of the oven, the front of the stove hood, and the burners are drying. And now I'm about to take apart the hood fan. I'm going to take that apart and see if I can get that apart easily uh, without turning the electric off and we're gonna paint this today as well if we can so that's what i'm about to do now okay you guys so i just took it down it came down easy uh all of the white wires are together three wires are together three of the black wires or brown wires are together uh, I think I will have to, I think I will have to turn my electric off in order to do this, but I don't know. I don't know if I turn my electric off. Does that mean the electric for the trailer is going to automatically go off? Because I do have batteries on here. So, I don't know. I'm going to go outside and unplug the electricity and see if I come back in and I have some lights. So, and I need some black electrical tape. So, let me do that. We are going to put an extra coat of paint on here, but we have water stains on here from when the water hose burst. So it's feeling like it's dry enough. And these right here, we're going to do an extra coat of paint on these as well. And this one right here. It's looking good. I'm gonna let that dry some more and I'm gonna put another coat of paint on here as well. Even though this one is in the sun more, I still wanna make sure it's dry really good because I'm putting several coats of paint on it. So I'm gonna put about two or three, no, about three, maybe even four coats of paint on this because I really, really, really wanna make sure is coated really 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 well so while i'm doing this and i have it off of the stove i just want to make sure i'm doing it well so i won't have to take this off again so it's better to do it right the first time and put as many coats as you think you're going to need on there the first time so that way you won't have to take this off again and do this again. So I'll be back. OK, 
okay you guys so this is the second coat of paint on this and second coat of paint on this right here so i finished uh my second can of paint and again i am using the rust-oleum appliance epoxy paint in black i'll put the link in the description box below and also i am using this little spray can grip thing you guys this makes all the difference in the world and i will link this in the description box below as well you guys need one of these this is a game changer and a life changer if you are doing a lot of diy projects where you're going to be using spray paint it just makes it so much easier and less drips and a better grip and you're getting less paint on your hand because you're not trying to put your finger on that nozzle thing so you definitely won't need one of these and i will link this in the description box below looking for my black electrical tape because i need to turn off the electric to get the vent fan down and i think some electric tape in here I'm hoping I have some electric tape in here if not girl I might have to go searching for and digging for my electric tape which I didn't want to have to do that and it's not none it's not none up in here so we gonna have to go find some black electrical tape somewhere. Okay, you guys, I am through kind of sorter. This is uh, three coats of paint on here. See how shiny this is? This one over here is not as shiny and it has a lot of little trash in it because some trash blue. So I'm thinking about lightly sanding it and seeing if it'll mess it up. I got one can of paint left. So if it do mess it up, then I could just use the last can of paint on this one. And that one have three coats already. I think these have three coats on them. I'm just letting everything dry, but I'm gonna lightly sand this and see what it do. So let's do this. So let me just let you guys know because some of you like the matte look after you paint this the number of times you want to paint it two or three colors if you want to sand this and get the matte look you see how it's not taking the paint off but it's giving it that mattified look so if you like the mattified look you can use the hypoxy paint and then after you let it dry long enough and you put enough coats on it, you can sand it down. I just sanded it with the 80 grit little thing, spongy thing. And it didn't take the paint off. It's not making it too rough. I have these little stains that I'm trying to get out, but they don't look like they're going to come out. But if you like that matte look and if I wanted to keep the matte look here, and keep this shiny look up there i could do that uh and i don't know what i'm gonna do i kind of like the matte look with the shiny look right here but then it's not gonna match my stove because my stove is gonna be shiny 
So what I think I'm gonna do is just continue to sand this down and try to get as much of this out of here as I possibly can. And just all the little, uh, all the little stuff that had flew up in there. And I'm gonna get that out of there and then I'm gonna use the last can of paint and give this two more coats of paint eventually. And yeah, so I'm just gonna finish sanding this down. But if you guys like the matte look and you want your whole stove to be matte, paint it the color that you wanna paint it. Put three or four coats on it or put three coats on it or three or four coats on it and then sand it down with an 80 grit sandpaper really well and it's kind of just gonna like buff it out and give it that matte look that you like i think you'll be pleased with the finish if you like the matte look so let me finish and i'll be back okay you guys so i'm finished sanding this and i sand it with the 80 grit sandpaper i like the way it smoothed out and i like the way that the uh paint didn't come off so i like the way that the paint is on there and I think between coats if you let it dry long enough and you sanded it between coats I think it'll make this have a better finish and be a long lasting finish and then you can put your last coat on there or your last two coats on there to make it shiny so I'm gonna have to watch this because everything that I just sanded out I sanded out all this little stuff that's coming off the tree that's flying on here and I don't want that to get back in the paint because it made it look it didn't make it look good it didn't make it look like a good finish but I still wanted to have that sheen like this one over here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this one over here and paint it and uh, like I say I like the fact that it I didn't sand the sides but I like the fact that it smoothed it out and it didn't remove any paint off of it. So that kind of makes that paint, in my opinion, stick to the appliance even more because it's just on there and I just sanded it in there and it's really smooth. So if you like the matte finish after you put the number of coats you want to put on there or in between coats, you can sand it with some 80 grit sandpaper. And I even had the 80 grit on here. Sand it with some 80 grit sandpaper and just keep sanding it until you get a buffed finish. And then after that, you can sand it with the 60 grit and that's just gonna buff it out even more. And I don't know if they have a oh, 600 grit. I don't know if they have one that's even uh, better than this for buffing, but if you have one for buffing, then after you finish sanding it with the 80 grit, then you could just buff it real good and uh, that'll just make it a little more smoother. So I'm about to go get my last can of paint and we're gonna proceed to paint this piece right here and these pieces over here. And I think I will leave that one with just three coats, but that one will be an easier piece to paint anytime because it comes off really easy. So I'm just gonna use that last can to finish up this piece and those right there. Okay, you guys so I am going to give you guys some tips on how to paint your stove or your appliances or your refrigerators on what I learned from this experience number one do not use the rust-oleum um, the extreme heat 
uh, paint that are for barbecue pits, don't use that one for your indoor appliances. Uh, don't do that one that's a waste of money because it's not made for that and it's not going to give you the look and the finish that you are looking for uh so make sure the paint that you do get is the uh rust-oleum epoxy appliance epoxy paint i'm going to put the link to the description in the description box below for this paint so you can make sure that you are getting the correct one and if you're going to be painting a stove I suggest that you do three to four coats because you want to make sure that the paint is going to adhere and stay on there. And then when you clean with the Brillo pad and everything, you want to make sure the paint, paint stays on there. So I am going to give a like a month update to you guys on my stove top. I think the oven door is going to be fine, but the stove top, it's what's going to need the most cleaning. So I'm going to give you an update on how this paint holds up a month later. And then we might do a six month uh, test and then you can always touch it up. That's the good thing about it. So uh, I'm going to let you know the sandpaper that I also used. I used a 80 grit sandpaper to sand it in the beginning and to sand it in between on the door front to sand it in between uh so i used the 80 grit and that made it uh get the matte finish so if you want the matte finish after you put the number of coats that you want on there hey then you i had to wait to it cool down so i could come in the back back here and look and see if i have some electrical tape I know I got electrical tape somewhere. Where or oh, where is the question? So anyway, I got to pull this stuff out, go in my little containers under here and see if I can find some electrical tape. Okay, you guys, I just did all that and I looked for my black electrical tape. I can't find it anywhere. I know I have some somewhere because I bought a roll the last time I needed some because I couldn't find it. So I can't find the black electrical tape anywhere. So I am headed to Dollar General right now. It's going on 8 p.m. I'm supposed to be going live, but I'm gonna go walk and get the black electrical tape now. So at least that way in the morning, cause I'm not gonna turn my lights off tonight. So at least that way in the morning, I'll have the black electrical tape and I can start my DIY right away. So that's what I'm about to do. I'm about to walk to Dollar General. And I need to get some, remember to get some, uh, some uh, Brillo pads as well. just made uh, some uh, spring rolls in my London shine, sunshine um, air fryer. Let me let y'all hear the first crunch. Let y'all hear the first crunch. Lord Jesus, thank you for this food we're about to receive. Amen. Mm. Okay, y'all. Okay, I had took the vent hood down, but I had to put it back up temporarily because I can't find my black tape. So, my electrical tape. So, I'm going to go ahead and just put the stove components back on and uh, so we can have a finished look of the stove.
Okay, you guys, this is the finished product of the stove. I am liking it. I just put a few scrapes on it, putting this on there. I don't know how this is gonna hold up to the heat, because I don't know if that paint was made for the heat, but we painted it anyway, and we shall see. So that's how it's looking, y'all, and I'm loving it. It looks beautiful. So make sure you tune in and watch the full video. And let me know what you think.